Spinal Cord Compression. In this whiteboard video of our Oncology Emergency Series, we will discuss an overview of spinal cord compression. A detailed written module and virtual patient cases are available on learnoncology.ca. You may wish to open this and follow along with them. By the end of the video, you should understand the following objectives. Pause the video now to review them. A spinal cord compression is an oncology emergency that happens when a tumor causes impingement of the spinal cord. This may be a primary or metastatic tumor nearby the cord. This leads to pain and potentially irreversible neurological dysfunction. Anatomy. To better understand SCCs or spinal cord compressions, we should understand the basic anatomy of the spinal cord. The spinal cord is a vital link between the brain and the body. It can be divided into the cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and coccygeal sections. In adults, it's a single tubular structure from the base of the skull to the L1, L2 vertebrae. It sits within the vertebral canal, posterior to the vertebral bodies. Below this level, the nerve roots individually separate to form the cauda equina. In general, Nerve roots exit through the intervertebral foramina to mediate motor and sensory functions. Pathophysiology Knowing the anatomy, you can appreciate that these structures are in a tight space. Any additional structure, such as a tumor, can easily compress and impinge adjacent structures. The vast majority of spinal cord compressions, that is 90%, occur when a tumor grows in a vertebral body and creates a mass effect on the cord, either through displacement of the vertebrae or through growth superiorly and inferiorly, causing epidural compression. Alternatively, 10% of the time, tumors can grow paraspinally and invade through the foramen to cause similar pressure effects. Spinal cord compressions are common. Population-based studies show the incidence is approximately 3% in the five years preceding death from cancer. Obviously, this depends on the type of cancer. Incidence is highest in myeloma, prostate, nasopharynx, and breast cancers. Clinical Syndrome Overall, SCC often causes these symptoms. Back pain, motor weakness or paralysis, sensory changes, bladder and bowel dysfunction. Unfortunately, the diagnosis of SCC is often delayed. Progressive worsening back pain is often the first symptom. The pain may present variably depending on the location. This includes worsening when lying down, when the epidural space is stretched, or worse with walking due to spinal instability. Localized pain may occur when the tumor affects adjacent soft tissues or dural nerves. Radicular pain is often common. Up to 85% of cases present with motor symptoms. Commonly, this may present as weakness, however, severe cases may cause paralysis. Again, physical findings will vary depending on site and may include upper or lower extremity dysfunction and abnormal gait. It may be useful for you to review the basics of upper and lower motor neuron dysfunction at this time. Sensory changes are less common, however useful clinically in determining the location of the lesions. Numbness or paresthesia may be present around one to five levels caudal to the spinal level of the lesion. Saddle or perianal anesthesia may indicate cauda equina syndrome. Bladder and bowel dysfunction is present in up to half of spinal cord compression patients. This may present as urinary retention and overflow incontinence. Differential diagnosis of back pain in oncology patients. Back pain in a cancer patient should always be taken seriously. However, it is important to consider benign versus malignant causes. Benign causes include musculoskeletal causes such as soft tissue injuries, spinal stenosis, or disc herniations. Infectious causes, such as epidural abscesses, may also exist. Malignant causes are commonly from metastatic disease and less commonly primary tumors in the spine. Investigations. 
MRI is the first line imaging modality to evaluate SCC as it shows both the main lesion and adjacent soft tissue structures as well as edema. CT scan with contrast is time efficient, however may be limited in its ability to see lesions along the spinal cord, nor does it reflect spinal cord edema. Other modalities, such as CT myelography or bone scans, are less often used. Management. SCC is considered an emergency because rapid treatment is required to prevent irreversible neurological sequelae. Initial medical treatment consists of glucocorticoids or steroids in nearly all spinal cord compression patients. Concurrent treatment includes additional analgesia, anticoagulation, and addressing anatomic complaints, that is bowel and bladder dysfunction. Definitive treatment is often through surgery or radiotherapy. This diagram outlines some of the factors one can consider when choosing a modality, including spinal stability, degree of compression, and surgical appropriateness. For most patients, radiation is the mainstay, but in fit and well patients, surgery plus adjuvant radiation may be an option. Chemotherapy is rarely used for spinal cord compression as most malignancies causing spinal cord compression are chemoresistant and would not respond in a timely enough fashion to eliminate this emergency. This concludes our discussion on spinal cord compression or SCC. Please visit learnoncology.ca for further information on this and other oncology topics. Thank you.